Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Keurig K Duo. This is one of the newest Keurig models. Some of you had asked for this review, so here it is. With this unit, you can make a single cup of coffee using K pods or a carafe using your own ground coffee. The unit measures 12.9 inches tall, 10.9 inches wide, and 12.7 inches deep. With the handle open, the height is 17.6 inches. With the drip cover open, the height is 18 inches. With the cover open, you won't be able to fit it under your cabinets. The unit weighs 9.7 pounds, and the carafe weighs a pound. The cord length is 30 inches. There is a quick start guide included with this Keurig. With the drip tray in place, you have 6 and a quarter inches of clearance to place your mug. If you remove the drip tray, you have about 8 inches to place a mug. The glass carafe holds 12 cups. These are 12 5 ounce cups, which is a standard measure for most drip coffee makers. The carafe has a flip top lid. The hot plate stays warm for 2 hours after brewing and then the machine automatically shuts off. When you're brewing with the carafe side, you can pull out the carafe, pour the coffee into your cup, and put it back within 20 seconds. With the single serve side, you can use K-cup pods or the reusable Keurig filter with your own ground coffee. Just remove the pod holder and place the reusable filter with your own coffee. I've done a review of this filter and how to use it. If you want to see it, I'll put a link right below this video. This is the power on button. You can set the time using the hour and minute buttons here. Using the auto button, you can program the carafe side to brew coffee at a specific time up to 24 hours in advance. The big K in the middle is the brew button. Before you brew, choose the single serve pod or the carafe. Also choose the cup size. You have a choice of 6, 8, 10, or 12 cups. There's also a strong button here that you can use with either the carafe side or the single serve side. The brewing time is a little bit longer and it gives you a stronger cup of coffee. You can only brew one side at a time, either the single serve or the carafe, not both at once. For the carafe side, there is a basket and you want to line the basket with a 12 cup flat bottom paper filter. If you don't want to use paper filters, Keurig has recently started selling a gold tone permanent filter and if you want to get that I'll put a link right below this video. Here's the water reservoir. Take the lid off and fill the reservoir. There's a minimum line and a maximum line so don't fill above that. If you want to use a Keurig water filter kit install it inside the container before filling with water. If you're using filtered water of course you don't need the separate water filter. There are two slots here and the two tabs on the side of the container just fit right into the slots. The reservoir holds 12 cups or 60 ounces. Before making coffee in the unit, you have to run water through the carafe side and the single serve side. Rinse the carafe, dry it, and put it on the plate. Put a cup that's at least 12 ounces on the single serve side. Fill water to the max fill line. First we'll run water through the single cup side. Press the power button, pod, and 8. Press the big K to brew. It'll take about 4 minutes to heat and then it'll brew. When the water is heating, the indicator light will go on and off. When it's ready to brew, the light will be solid. Now we can discard the water. You can hear the water heating up. After you brew one cup, it takes less than a minute for the water to heat up for your next cup. Now we'll run water through the carafe side. I'll choose carafe, eight, and brew. While you're brewing, whatever you selected will be lit up. 
the carafe is lit up and eight is lit up. The eight cups have finished brewing. The carafe button is red and that means the heating plate is on after brewing is finished. To turn the plate off, just press and hold the carafe button. I'll discard this water and then we can make coffee. I'll fill the reservoir to the max line. The heating plate is still warm, so I wouldn't leave the empty carafe on it. Lift the handle. I'm using a K-cup pod. I'll select pod. The strong button is lit up, so you can press it if you want to. I'm going to press 10 and brew. The temperature is about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. After I pressed brew, the coffee started pouring out within just a few seconds because the water had been heated up after the last brew. So it brews very quickly. There's going to be some splattering of the coffee all over the cup, the machine, and a little bit on your counter. I brewed 10 ounces in the Keurig Mini because um, I thought the Keurig Duo cup that I just brewed was a little weak. Just wanted to see if there was any difference in taste. When I brew eight ounces, the coffee tastes really good. And it's not the K-Cups because these are good quality K-Cups. They're dark and rich. I always put a little cream and sugar in my coffee and the eight ounce usually tastes much richer than this weaker 10 ounce. So use the strong button or brew an eight ounce cup of coffee. While I have the mini out, you can also see the difference in size. The K-Duo does take up a lot of space but if you drink a lot of coffee or if you have a lot of family members who drink coffee then obviously get the K-Duo because it gives you the option of the carafe. Get the mini if you have very little space. Don't forget to remove the pod when you're done brewing. Now we'll brew six cups of coffee on the carafe side. Put the paper filter in and use one tablespoon of ground coffee per cup. That's six tablespoons. Just level out the coffee. Press carafe and six. Press brew. Started brewing within a few seconds. Stop brewing. To brew the six cups, it took four minutes and 45 seconds. The carafe is lit up red, so the warming plate is on. You can leave that on if you'd like or turn it off by pressing and holding. The coffee is about 170 degrees. There was no dripping from the spout. I do need my cream and sugar though. It's a decent cup of coffee. If you like strong coffee, I'd recommend adding more than a tablespoon of coffee per cup. The brewing time is good under five minutes for six cups of coffee. Again, you have the option of pressing the strong button and it will take longer to brew, but you'll get a stronger cup of coffee. After the unit's cooled a little bit, you can remove the basket and the coffee. To clean, all the parts have to be hand washed. They're not dishwasher safe. 
So you can wash the basket, the carafe, lid, drip tray, the water reservoir, and it's lid in warm soapy water and rinse it. Don't dry the inside of the reservoir with a cloth because you don't want to leave any lint behind. The reservoir doesn't need to be cleaned all the time, just once in a while. After using a hot cocoa pod or another non-coffee pod, run water through the single serve side without any pod so it cleans the needle. All the parts of the Keurig that come in contact with water are BPA free. Five minutes after the last brew on the single serve side, the brewer will automatically shut off. If you're using the carafe side, the unit will automatically shut off two hours after you finish brewing. There are a couple of different models of the Keurig K Duo available. There's a less expensive model available exclusively at Walmart and it's called Essentials. The difference between that and this one is that this one has the strong brew option the programmable auto brew and the digital clock. The essentials version at Walmart is more basic and that's why it's less expensive. There's also a K-Duo Plus version that's available online and that comes with a 12 cup thermal carafe. I've put links to all the different filters for this unit right below this video. As always, I hope you found this review helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more.